Amanda Weiss, Shalom. Shalom. And welcome to Culture Buzz. A pleasure to be here. Amanda, you are the director of the Bible Lands Museum in Jerusalem. Sam. And uh, you are uh, responsible for starting a gold rush in Jerusalem today. <laughs> so how plead you? Guilty as charged. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. Can you tell us a bit about this uh, well, very unique... It's a gold rush that started today. It's a wonderful way to put it. I appreciate it. But it's more than just today because it started actually about a month ago when we opened our 20th anniversary exhibition at the Bible Lands Museum. And it's called Pure Gold. And it's an exhibition which you're going to see today because hey. I'm not going to let you leave the Bible Lands Museum without having seen it personally. Lucky me. Yes. No, it's an exquisite, stunning exhibition of ancient gold jewelry. I'm actually wearing replicas, so... Put them on specially for you today. Uh -huh. uh, that it's a replica. Yes, it's, absolutely. It's not no, the original. No, I don't get to wear the originals. They're on display. They are absolutely priceless. It's an exhibition that's never been seen before, actually. Uh, it's a whole collection that was kept uh, in storage and never had the opportunity to be researched and put out. So in celebration of the 20th anniversary, we decided this was the time to put this exhibition up, and we brought in the preeminent scholar in classical art, Sir John Boardman, from Oxford. Wow. And Professor Boardman researched the collection and wrote the catalog. He was here for the opening a few weeks ago. Thank you, uh, Oxford. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Boardman. He is, uh, you know, just... Um, it, it takes us to, as we say in Hebrew, a Rama ben Leomi, an international level of quality and standard. Uh, and we're very proud to have been able to do that. So with this amazing exhibition, then we have a phenomenally creative team here, and all these ideas began to pop. And one of them was to create a race for gold in Jerusalem and to take the Bible Lands Museum outside the, the borders of the museum. You may not know this, but not that many people know where the Bible Lands Museum is or that we even exist. Unfor uh, unforgivable. Unforgivable. See, you agree. I'm so pleased. Uh, and so I'm hoping that by putting us out here with uh, your wonderful efforts as well, that more people will know that we exist. And we are somewhat of a well-kept secret in Jerusalem, even though we're the second largest museum in the city in terms of collections and visitors and, uh, and certainly the, the expanse of what we do in programming here at the museum by far. And if I may say so, one of the reasons we are here today, in addition to uh, the gold rush, is the fact that the Bible Lands Museum in Jerusalem is so unique, not only in Israel, all over the world. I, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe it's one of its kind. Absolutely. Internationally. Right. Actually it is. The collection that the museum is based on was established by uh, a world-renowned collector named Ili Borovsky. And he established this over more than half a century of collecting. He was a scholar in his own right and, he, uh, and an historian. And he wanted to find artifacts that reflected the historicity of the Bible. That, that were evidence of the cultures, of the kings of the Bible. When we read the stories of the Bible, it's not just here in Jerusalem, it's not just the Holy Land or Israel specific. It's our entire region. That's why we're called the Bible Lands Museum. So it explains our title, which sometimes is a little hard to comprehend, but we are about the neighboring civilizations and cultures as much as we are about the history of Israel itself. And really the ancient history. So in another country, we'd be considered a museum of the ancient Near East, or an ancient history museum. But we show the material very differently, which is why we are unique, which comes to your question or your point. We show the material chronologically. So you can see developments in ancient Egypt and Mesopotamia, or ancient, what is today, Turkey, Anatolia, side by side. Right? When we talk about the exodus from Egypt, right? the Yitziat Mitzrayim, that whole history, the time period, what was going on around us at the same time period, that's what you see here in the museum. So it's not like visiting the great museums of the world where, where those cultures are divided up. You'll have your Egyptian galleries and your Mesopotamian wing, and, and it's all you know sorted out very neatly for you, but you never get to understand the interrelationship between the cultures. And this is truly a mission of love. 
Mm, and commitment. Mm -hmm. And in a way, if one reflects, going back to the beginning, to the start, uh, almost against all odds. <laughs> and luckily for us, not in Toronto. <laughs> Ah, you're, you're getting all the secrets out at once. Okay, absolutely right. I got some tips before the conversation. You did. You did your research. <laughs> I can tell. <laughs> I feel like a little bit like Actors Studio when he sits there with the cards and he has all those little <laughs> hints along the way. <laughs> absolutely right. The museum um, is in many ways a family project. It was the collection of Eli Borofsky. Uh, private collection. A private collection. And he was in, for many years, post-war, well, I don't know how much time you want to spend on this, but um, the history is a very powerful history. And we have many Holocaust memorials around the world, and probably the greatest one right here in Jerusalem at Yad Vashem. But Eli did not want to create a, a memorial to the Holocaust. He wanted to create a, a universal cultural institution where people would learn about our biblical history people of all faiths. That was his goal, that the evidence of the cultures, the civilizations of the biblical period could come to light for people who wanted to learn more about the Bible. So, not from a religious perspective, but from a historical perspective, which is a very fine line in a country where there are so many arguments over religion and, and which section of Judaism or you belong to, or if it's not Judaism, Christianity, or Islam, or other religions beyond that. Religion is such a hot topic, but the Bible is really a chronicle. It's really a history book. It is our map of the ancient world. And that's what this museum is about showing. So Eli Borofsky, whose family, he grew up in, he was born in Warsaw in 1913. By the time Hitler came to power, he'd been educated at the finest institutions in Europe, starting in Poland and then in Europe. Very rich religious background as well, Mir Yeshiva, uh, you know, Tachmoni and, and Mir Yeshivot, and he was a dreamer and a scholar, and that was cut very short during the war. And once the war was over and he knew the fate of his family, he was a deeply tormented soul over this, and his only way of combating that was to create something where people could turn it into something positive and learn. Because if the Bible is our history book, and it's the moral, ethical code by which we live, then we need to understand that it's real, that that history is real, and the way that he saw best to do so was to create a museum, to build a collection, and make it into a museum for the public. And he donated the entire collection. And together, with an amazing woman named Batya Borovsky, and I happen to know her extremely well, uh, they built this museum together. And she was rather a dynamo and a powerhouse and very much a self-made woman, born to immigrants, fresh off the boat in New York. Um, and they joined forces, and really almost against all odds, and they built this museum to house this collection. They donated the collection, and they've created an endowment which supports it in part to about 25% of our budget is actually still endowed by the family which is uh, a very wonderful uh, element for us to be able to function with. Amazing. And I know that although this museum focuses in the past, mm -hmm. you aim especially at the future generations. Absolutely. You invest so much yeah. in children. Yeah, that's absolutely right. Education. Children are our future, and they are our goal. And uh, we have fantastic programs, including this Race for the Gold, which we started talking about. It's designed for families, and it's a treasure hunt throughout both the museum and Jerusalem, and it's actually standalone. It's inspired by the exhibition, but it is something that can forever stay. Today, the Israel Corporation of Medals has, uh, has actually joined us in making this a very exciting day, and they're giving an ounce of gold as the first prize for the family that finishes this, where you have to get to where, work at it, where, absolutely, start where, running. Where do I sign in? <laughs> Upstairs in the entrance to the museum. <laughs> Will you be kind enough to Yeah, order? absolutely right. This is actually the book. Uh, it's a little um, booklet that we've created, and it's filled with clues uh, that take you through the city, 
and page by page you have a little bit of an introduction and every page takes you to a different part of the city or the museum and you have to actually read very carefully answer the clues correctly on wow. each page get to the final page and if you've answered them correctly then you win both and educational and fun and fun and, and maybe design. and rewarding for one and it could be no it's actually more than for one because the first prize is an ounce of gold but there are other prizes as well uh, and no, today I, is the one day there'll be prizes I apologize it's rewarding for everybody who participates Well, it is, and actually... It's like the Olympics. It, there you go. There you it's go. the participation. There you go, and it's knowing that you've been there. But actually, we hope that people walk away from this enriched with information and having seen Jerusalem a little bit differently. You know, Jerusalem also gets a bad name in the press. People don't realize what a phenomenal city this is, how rich in culture it is. How rich in history it is, not just the ancient old city of Jerusalem, but even what we consider modern Jerusalem has rich historical roots in it as well. And this, that's a little bit of a hint, but this race for the gold takes us to some very exciting spots within the city. It reminds me of the famous Hamitzer riddles. <laughs> that's right. Is, is that's he involved? Right. Uh, he's not involved, but it, uh, you're not far off. And, uh, wonderful. It's, it's a wonderful project. We have something... Similar but different that uh, you can walk through the museum with called Shamshi, the Tales of Shamshi, walking through the Bible. It's meant for parents and children together. It's in Hebrew and in English so that anybody coming to the museum at any time of day can actually come through and really appreciate the stories. Yeah. Amanda, since this museum, phenomenal uh, museum, is covering what is today Israel and our neighbors, Do you get from time to time visitors from these countries? Well, from the Arab world, we don't get many tourist visitors. We do actually have a not, large... Not yet. Not yet, not yet. We're all hopeful. Yes. We believe in peace. We believe in um, coexistence. Uh, I uh, work actually very hard towards that. Um, we have a whole Arab education department in the museum. So the Arab school system does come to the museum. Excellent. We also have a project of Dukium, of coexistence, called the Image of Abraham, mm -hmm. which brings together, it's running for 15 years, thanks to mostly friends from overseas that have made it possible and supported us in Wonderful. making this, this initiative Wonderful. happen. And it brings together parents and children for um, actually a, an, an expanded program. It's not a one-hit program. kind of experience uh, and it's a full day in the museum for the children it's like the equivalent of a school day for about four visits running and then a, a festival with the parents and and uh, school involved at the end it's really a celebration of understanding our shared common heritage and uh, I don't believe we can build peace and uh, you know you're with the foreign ministry this is your job you're supposed to be uh, creating a new a new future for us but, but we, we have need, to do it we together. need any help we can get well we have to do it together absolutely and I believe in the children and I believe in the future Wonderful. and uh, one of our new initiatives is also with birthright because this country is the birthright of all of these young people we'll just say that the birthright is the project that brings young Jewish people from all over the world all over the to world. visit as well that's right and we finally broken through and started bringing them to the Bible lands museum because it's really if you think about it it's the only single site in the country where they can understand the global regional perspective right. of where we come from right. and the same is true also with a new initiative for the evangelical world Mm -hmm. uh, and we have launched a program of a tour for the evangelical Christian world that is a very powerful highlight tour of our collection looking at the roots of monotheism monotheism, monotheism. Excuse me, from Abraham to Jesus because we actually we are the Bible lands museum but we we predate and and post the uh, biblical period we've sort of taken a deep breath and expanded ourselves with a little bit of liberty so we go from earliest civilization to about 1,000 of the common era a flexible approach to history well the, it's, the one we like it's a broad approach to history it's uh, flexible it sounds interpretive <laughs> God forbid God forbid God is forbid. right <laughs> I meant it the scientific way yes absolutely, absolutely. excellent. So. What can we wish you and your museum? 
Well, uh, first of all, um, many more visitors in the years to come. We have a phenomenal expansion plan for the institution. We've just received approvals on the land uh, adjacent to the museum and we are planning to expand. We have great dreams and we're always looking for partners, for people that share our vision, share our dream, that are interested in becoming involved with us. And, uh, and we hope that everybody that sees this will come and visit us and find us on Facebook, like us, check us out on the YouTube uh, clips that you've put up that we have as well. Visit our website, which is BLNJ, Bible Lands Museum Jerusalem org. Very easy to find us. And uh, come and get to know our museum, learn more. And I'm sure that this will fall on both receptive ears and hearts. Yeah, thank you. So, thank you very much. And I suggest that we will rush to try and find the goal. Absolutely. Let's race. Thank you. Shalom, shalom.